This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, how can I create a model of a mask from a face using Extract? So this question was sent along with an image, and here we have the image here. So the user has the female head. They went through and applied masking to that model, and then using the Extract functionality, they want to generate a mask. So you can see they had the extract process generate a new subtool, but you can see it has inner cavities for the eye and also inner cavities for the mouth. So I'm going to go through and demonstrate the process of how to take a model like the female head here and use the extract functionality to generate a mask subtool. So a mask that can be worn by a model. So I'm going to hop over to ZBrush here and I just have the female head loaded in. Now the female head consists of two different subtools. So if we go to the tool palette and then open up the subtool palette here, you can see I have the female head and then also a subtool that contains the eyes and the teeth. So I wanna come over first and just turn off the eyes and the teeth. So just clicking this eyeball icon here, and that will turn that subtool's visibility off. And now I should just have the female head. I'm also gonna disable the floor grid. So I just see the model on my screen here. And the next step I want to do is I want to just divide this mesh up a little so it's a little smoother. So I'm going to go to the tool palette. I'm going to navigate down to the geometry area and open this up. In here, I'm going to click the divide button or press control plus D on my keyboard. And that is now going to divide that mesh and just add some more topology to it, smoothing out these surfaces. Now with this model, if I look at it and then even go through and say change the visibility on this, so holding down control and shift and getting the select rectangle brush, and just drawing out a selection brush like this. And if I release, you're gonna see this is gonna change the visibility on the model. And you'll notice that this model contains these inner cavities. So it has inner cavities for the eyes, it has some deep nasal cavities, and then it also has a whole mouth area. So when the user was applying masking to this mesh, the masking is also grabbing the surfaces that are contained inside the model. So when you perform that extract by going to the subtool palette and then going down to the extract area and then clicking extract and then clicking accept, you're going to get a subtool that contains those inner areas as well because those parts were masked and when you perform the extract, it's going to look at anything that's masked on the model. So it's generating a new subtool on any masked areas and since those areas were contained in that masking, you're now getting this result. So one way to prevent this from happening on a model that contains inner cavities like this is to be very precise with your masking. Or you can just go in and clean up the model first, make it a DynaMesh, which will seal off a lot of these inner cavities, and then you can perform a masking on that new mesh and then use the extract functionality to get the result you're looking for. So I'm gonna go back to the original female head here and I'm also gonna turn off the visibility for that extract and then I'm gonna hold control and click off the canvas to clear that mask. So I'm gonna go the route of cleaning up this subtool here. So I'm gonna go through and I wanna generate some new geometry to fill in the holes for the eye cavities and the nose cavity. Since the mouth has some interpenetrating geometry generating the overlap here from the top lip to the bottom lip, when we perform a DynaMesh on that area there, it's gonna seal up, so I don't really have to worry about that mouth cavity. But the eye cavity and the nose cavity, I just wanna seal them up a little bit better. So I'm just gonna append in a spherical object. So I'm gonna go back to the tool palette here, go to the subtool area. I'm gonna click on the append button, and then in here I'm gonna select the sphere 3D object, which is going to now append a new sphere object to my subtool list here. I'm now gonna come and select that sphere object. I'm then gonna to switch to the Gizmo 3D by clicking on the move button here or pressing W on my keyboard. With this Gizmo 3D, I can now come through and scale this and then use the move screen space or other move operations to just reposition this sphere in my scene. And I basically want to just scale this down and position it in the eye cavity. And you wanna make sure that when you're doing this, that it's penetrating all the different surfaces. So you wanna make this as watertight as possible. Just scaling it down and making sure that there is overlap in all these areas. So just using the Gizmo 3D, scaling and moving it around. And make sure you check the bottom and the top of the eyelids as well because those areas are very thin. 
We just wanna make sure we get this correct. So looking at all those angles there, just rotating around the model and make sure all the gaps along the surfaces here have been filled. So just taking that sphere and just filling those areas, you may need to do some non-uniform scaling to kind of fit it in position. But you just wanna make that whole area there watertight. So that looks pretty good there. And now I want to perform a function that will allow me to duplicate this spherical object and then create a new one that I can then use to fill the gap in the nasal cavity. So to do this, I'm going to hold down control and then I'm going to select any of the move options on the Gizmo 3D and then click and drag those. And this will now perform a internal subtool duplication. So as long as your subtool does not have subdivisions, if you have part of a model unmasked and you hold down control and then use any of the move options on the gizmo, so the move screen space or the move X, Y, and Z, this will now duplicate that unmasked part. So you can see using this process, I can generate multiple spheres if I wanted, and this is all gonna be contained in the same subtool. So I'm just gonna undo this back to my first duplication here, and then I'm gonna get out of solo mode. And now with this new sphere, I'm just gonna position this in the nasal cavity here. So using the Gizmo 3D to position and scale this, it's the same process I just did with that eye cavity. So scaling this down. This one you may have to perform some rotations as well to just make sure it fills that area of the model there. So using the rotation options and also the scaling options. I just wanna fill this nasal cavity. So something like that. And once again, you wanna make sure that there is overlap in all those areas. It's gonna allow you to just keep this shape watertight. So we got something like that. I'm gonna move this in just a little bit. So I want some nasal cavity, just not as deep as it was normally. So that looks pretty good. So now I have filled both of those holes on the model there. So now I can hold control and click off to clear my mask. And now I just need to perform a mirror and weld function to take the geometry that's on this side of the mesh and mirror it across to the other side. So make sure I still have that same subtool selected. I'm gonna go down to the geometry area here. I'm gonna open up the modified topology area. And in here, I'm gonna click mirror and weld. So it's gonna take anything that's on this side of the model and mirror it to the other side. So clicking this will now give me this result. So now I have both sides of the model's eyes and nose cavities filled. Now after I have this process done, I still have these as two separate subtools. So I wanna take these now and merge them together. So I wanna merge the visible subtools in my scene. So anything that has the eyeball icon active. To do this, we just need to go back to the tool palette, go to the subtool area, and then we wanna go down to the merge area and open this up. And in here, there is a merge visible. So this is going to look at any subtools that have the eyeball icon turned on, and it's now gonna create a new tool from those. So simply coming over here and clicking this is going to take those two subtools and merge them together. And then now at the very top of the tool palette, I have a new tool created, which consists of both those objects. So you can see that I now have a single subtool that looks like this. So now that I've created this new model, I now wanna turn this into a Dynamesh. And when I use the Dynamesh process, it's going to just look at the outer shell of the model it's gonna make the model watertight, and then it's gonna remove any of those inner cavities. So going back to the tool palette, I'm gonna go down to the geometry area here. I'm gonna to navigate to the Dynamesh tab and open that up. In here, I'm gonna turn blur down to zero, and I'm gonna change my resolution to say 1024, and then I'm now going to click Dynamesh. So this is going to look at the model here, and it's going to now generate a Dynamesh model. So it's going to remove all those inner cavities, and now I should have a mesh that looks like this. Now, as long as your resolution is high enough, you shouldn't notice hardly any change. So if I undo, this was my original model here that still contained those individual parts. And if I redo, this is now the dynameshed version of the model that is now completely watertight and sealed. So now after I have this model now sealed up, I can now turn off perspective and kind of rotate to the side like this. I can hold down control, which is gonna select my masking brush. Up here, I can now change the masking brush to say the mask circle brush. And then with this brush selected, if I hold control and click off my model, I'm gonna get this little mask circle. I can then hold space to position this on my model. So I can just adjust this like so. And then I can release, and this is now going to generate a mask around that area. 
So now I have masking applied to my surface here. I can go back to the subtool palette and then go down to the extract area. And now I can click extract. This is going to look at the masked part of the model. And after I click this, I'll get a preview. And then if that preview looks good, I just want to click accept. This will generate a new subtool. So now going back to my subtool palette here, I'm going to make sure I have that mask selected and I'm going to activate solo. And when you use the extract function, you're going to get a mask applied. So I can hold control and clear that mask. And you can see now this is the result I'm getting. So if I rotate to the back here, you can see I have none of those internal cavities generated anymore. So since I used those separate pieces of the geometry to fill the holes on the original model, and then I turned that model into a DynaMesh, I've now just masked the outer surface. And when I use that extract functionality, I'm now getting this. So I'm getting more of the result you're looking for. Now, another thing to notice is that the mask right now does not have any cavities for the eyes or the nose. So if you want to have this looking realistic, or maybe you want to 3D print this out, you're going to want those two areas so whoever is wearing the mask can see and also breathe. So one nice thing that ZBrush did when we used those different pieces of geometry to fill those areas on the model, it's kept those different geometries as separate polygroups. So if I come over here to the polyframes area and I turn off line and then activate the polyframes, you can see that I have a different polygroup assigned to the areas where I plugged the holes. So you can see I have both the eyes and the nose as a different polygroup. So with this, I can now hold down Control and Shift, which is going to give me my select rectangle brush. And I can now click on one of these polygroups, which is going to isolate it. And then I can click it again, which is going to hide it. So you can see with two clicks there, I've now hidden those parts of the model, and now there are open holes. Now I do the same thing on the back. So I'm going to rotate the back side, hold Control and Shift again, and I'm going to click on the cavities here. And now I have holes generated on this model around the eye and nose areas. Now at this point, this is only changing the visibility of the mesh. So I want to remove the geometry on those parts. So I'm going to go back to the tool palette. I'm going to go down to the geometry area. I'm going to go to the modified topology area. And in here, I'm going to click delete hidden, which is going to hide those parts that I just hid on the mesh. And now I truly have holes going through the mesh. So now I want to seal up these holes. So I want to bridge these two holes, the holes in the front here and the holes in the back, creating a surface in between these. And to do this, I'm going to use the Curve Bridge Brush. So I'm going to go to the Brush Palette, open this up. In here, I'm going to locate the Curve Bridge Brush, make sure I have that selected. So now that I have the Curve Bridge Brush selected, I want to zoom in. I'm going to zoom in on this eye over here. I'm going to click and drag, which is going to draw a curve. And then I'm going to hold down shift as I get near this open edge here. And this is now going to frame this curve around that open edge. So you can see now I've taken that and generated a curve around the open area of the eye there. So I've just generated one curve. So in order for the curve bridge brush to work, I need to have two curves generated. So this is my first one. Now I'm going to rotate to the back of the model here. I'm going to click and drag and then hold shift again, which is going to give me a second curve on the back of the model. And when I release this time, it's now going to look at that first curve and look at the second curve, and it's going to bridge the area in between them. So you can see now I have geometry that's been applied in between those two surfaces. Now I can do the same thing for the nostrils. I'm coming to the nostril here. I'm going to start dragging out, hold down shift to get that first curve. I'm going to rotate to the back of the model, hold down shift and then get that second curve. This is now going to bridge that area as well. So now I have this area of the model bridged and this area of the model bridged. I can now clear my masking by holding control and clicking off the model. I can also delete these curves by going to the stroke palette up here, going to the curve functions and clicking delete. And now I have something like this. So I've now sealed those holes for the eyes and the nose of my mask here. I'm now going to perform a mirror and weld, which will take this side of the model and mirror it over the other side, so I don't have to do that curve bridge option more than needed. So I'm going to come back to the geometry palette over here. I'm going to click mirror and weld, so it's going to mirror that process to the other side. And I can turn off my polyframes, and now you can see this is the result I have. So now I have a mass generated from the original tool there using the extract functionality, and then using the polygroups that were created by the models that I used to fill the holes. I've now removed those areas and then used the curve bridge brush to bridge the gaps between those two areas. So now you can come through and smooth this out or modify it as needed. So I can change my brush size here. 
and make sure I have symmetry turned on and come in and smooth some of these rough edges where the um, bridge happened. I can do that for the nose and the eyes there. And now I can continue sculpting on this to generate any effects I want on this mask. If I want this to be a little lower resolution as well, since I divided it up, it has quite a bit of topology here. You can now go to the geometry tab as well. You can go down to the Z remesher area here and you can reprocess this model with Z remesher, which will give you lower resolution topology. So as an example of this, I'm just come over here and click Z remesher. And this is going to generate new topology for my model. That'll be a little less dense. And so after Z remesher has been processed with the default settings, here's what I got here. So now I have a lower resolution version of this mask. If I turn back on my polyframes, you can see this is the topology here. At this stage, you can divide it up to increase your resolution and allow you to work with subdivisions, or you can go to the dynamic subdivision area here and activate dynamic subdivisions. So a lot more flexibility is now available to you after you've used the zero mesher process. So that's the quick process on taking the demo female head that's inside a ZBrush and generating a mask subtool from it. If you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.